Robert Fretlaw was born in Duisburg in Germany in 1924. As a boy, he joined the Hitler Youth and in 1942 he volunteered for the Luftwaffe but soon diverted to paratrooper training. Robert took part in the Italian campaign until wounded and taken prisoner during the Battle of Casino in 1944. The following is taken from extracts of Robert's 1999 interview with the Second World War Archive. I was posted to the 1st Paratroop Division, Pioneers, 4th Regiment in, uh, on the Adriatic as a pioneer. And that's where my pioneer experience came in with laying mines and uh, handling explosives. And then um, posted to take over to Casino. And uh, they needed the Paris to reinforce uh, the front line because we were better trained, we were better equipped in that respect. The 4th Regiment, which I was part of it, and were pioneers, attached to the regiment, and which became later the 15th Company, we were stationed just behind Casino. You know. And uh, we went in there the beginning of February 1944. And from there, we witnessed the uh, bombing of the monastery, three, four miles away on top of the hills. We were behind the hills, and there was a valley of which the French Canadian always trying to get through to sneak from behind, which we were guarding. We did night duty on machine guns and all of that. And then beginning of April, we went back up to the monastery, refreshed with new lunch. And then we went down the mountain on the other side, onto the castle hill, and relieved the Paris who were in there in action. That's the position I went in from, from April to the night of the 17th of May. In his interview, Robert describes his role in preventing the French Canadians from outflanking his position until he had the order to retreat to the monastery. During the final Allied attack on the 18th of May, Robert was injured. He sought refuge with other wounded soldiers in St. Benedict's Crypt inside the monastery. What I remember was a big flash. That was a grenade somewhere near this vicinity. And when I woke up, my left leg was like a big balloon. So I knew the monastery inside, which were only maybe a couple of hundred yards uh, on the left. And I crawled down to the first aid post, which were down in the uh, St. Benedict's script. And then they bandaged my leg. And, and then they said, well, there's no way you can walk there. So there were three of us badly wounded. And then there were quite a few lightly wounded. And what they were trying to do was to carry us back in the morning. The rest of the medical staff left the monastery about three, four o'clock in the morning. And then the, the, the morning came, 18th of May came, and then we heard some lads shouting, the British are coming, the Tommies are coming. And it was the Polish platoon led by Lieutenant Gubriel, which incidentally, we became very, very, very good friends later. And I remember then the, uh, an um, American reporter, which he knew more about us than what we knew about ourselves. He knew all our officers and, and all the lot. And can you imagine you've been in a battle for a month on end? You were filthy, you were lousy. I'm afraid, I'm afraid you were lousy, you were full of lies. You were dirty, you were unshaven. You, look, you must have looked a hell of a sight. And he comes in there with an American white trench coat immaculately clean and he puts all these questions to you. Well, I could have killed that dog. On the other side of Casino, what an ambulance, and there were one or two British soldiers in there, and then me and this other lot went into the ambulance, and uh, I don't know how many miles behind the line were an American field hospital, and they put us in there, and they looked after our legs, and that's how I became in the hands of the Americans. And then from then on, we went into an army truck. The driver there and me and this other lot, we were driven towards Naples and onto the harbor, onto a Liberty boat. I finished up in Virginia, and that's how I became to go, uh, arrive in the States. After working as a prisoner on farms in America, Robert found himself in a POW camp near Brussels from where he was sent to England and interned at a camp at RAF Lindholm near Doncaster in Yorkshire. And it was here where he began his music career after learning to play the double bass. 
After repatriation in 1948, Robert stayed in Yorkshire and married his sweetheart. He was a member of the White Eagles Jazz Band and was one of the first to play at Liverpool's famous Cavern Club, original home of the Beatles. He was also one of the founders of the Yorkshire Post Jazz Band and continued playing with them until he was 85 years old. Please help to rescue and preserve more memories of the Second World War. Visit www.war-experience.org.